In this lesson, we will study applications of radian measure. Now, the formula for finding the length of an arc of a circle follows directly from the definition that you and I um, looked at in an earlier lesson for an angle theta in radians. This formula here. Um, the measure of an angle theta in radians is equal to this ratio, where S is equal to, or F, S represents the length of the arc that is intercepted by central angle theta, and R represents the radius of the circle. Here in this diagram, notice that angle QOP has measure one radian, and it intercepts an arc that is equal in length to the radius of the circle. This angle, ROT, has measure theta radians, and it intercepts an arc of length s. Now, plane geometry teaches us that the lengths of the arcs here, s and r, are proportional to the measures of their central angles, theta, and this angle here, which is just only one radian. In other words, we can set up a proportion. s is to r what theta is to 1. That's a proportion, right? Um, that's what it means when we say that the lengths of the arcs are proportional to the measure of their central angles. S is to R what theta is to 1. And if we multiply both sides um, by uh, R, we can solve for S. And we would get S is equal to R times theta. Now this here, I want you to you know highlight this in your notes. This is very, very important. Um, it says in words that the, the length S of the arc intercepted on a circle of radius R by a central angle of measure theta radians is given by the product right here, the product of the radius and the radian measure of the angle. The radius of the circle and the radian measure of the angle. So here we have it um, in words as well, okay? So S is equal to, S represents arc length. It's equal to the product of the radius of the circle and the measure of angle theta. Now, what's very important is that theta here is expressed in terms of radians, not degrees. So if a problem has you calculating arc length or anything like that, make sure theta is in radians. If it happens to be in degrees, then just convert it to radians, okay? So theta here must be in radians. All right, here's our first example. A circle has radius 25.60 centimeters. Find the length of the arc intercepted by a central angle having each measure. So there's two parts to this, okay? There are, there's two different questions really here. The first angle has measure 7 pi over 8 radians. The second angle has uh, measure 54 degrees. Let's do this first one, all right? Um, first, please keep in mind uh, that the radius is given. Here is R, and they say find the length of the arc. In other words, find S, and this is your theta, okay? And the formula we're using is S is equal to R times theta. So that's all we have to do is multiply the radius and the radian measure of theta. So it's 25.60 25.60 centimeters, right? times 7 pi over 8 radians. Okay, let's just find that product. All right, I'm going to give two answers here. The first answer I'm going to get and give is an, is an exact answer in terms of pi, in terms of pi. In other words, um, I'm not going to press the pi button. Um, I'm going to leave pi just in my answer, okay? So I'm going to do 25.60 times 7, then divide by 8. And I get 22.4 uh, pi centimeters. Now this is an exact answer in terms of pi, in terms of pi. Let me box that for us. In terms of pi, 22.4 pi centimeters, right? Again, that was 25.60 times 7, then divide by 8. Now, if I actually get an approximation, this is approximately 70.37 centimeters, rounded to four significant digits. I noticed they gave me four significant digits in the problem, so that's what I wanted to use. All I needed to do was 22.4, and then multiply that by pi, using the pi button on my calculator. And don't forget, your units are centimeters, 
So this is the arc length. Let's go for the second problem now. But for this one, in order to use this formula, S is equal to R theta, we must convert 54 degrees to radian measure first. All right, I'm taking 54 degrees and I'm converting it to radian measure. Um, I believe the, let's see, I think the GCF between 54 and 180 is 18. Uh, let's see, 18 goes into 54 exactly three times. 18 goes into 180 10 times, yeah. So then in radian measure, 54 degrees is 3 pi over 10 radians. Now I can use my formula. So the arc length is equal to the uh, product of the radius and the radian measure of theta. So I have 25.60, right, is the radius that they gave me, times 3 pi over 10 radians. All right. Again, I'm going to give two answers here. One will be an exact answer in terms of pi, and I'm getting 7.68 pi centimeters. Now, that was found by just taking 25.60, multiplying it by 3, dividing by 10, but leaving pi in my answer. Okay, That's an exact answer. An approximation, uh, just take 7.68 and multiply by pi on your calculator, and you will get approximately 24. 0.13, that is a decimal point right there, 24.13 centimeters is the approximate length of that arc. All right, cool deal, everybody. Let's keep going. Let's keep learning. All right, example two. Erie, Pennsylvania is approximately due north of Columbia, South Carolina. The latitude of Erie is 42 degrees due north, and that of Columbia is 34 degrees due north. The radius of Earth is 6,400 kilometers. Find the north-south distance between the two cities. Okay, I think to help us understand um, how to approach this question, let us um, draw a picture. All right, so here we have um, the cities of Erie, uh, Pennsylvania, and Columbia, North Carolina. Now, it's important to note that the north here that is mentioned in the problem um, means north of the equator. So that's why I drew the equator here, and we're going north of the equator. So we're drawing the angles uh, from this due north here, okay? So we have a 34 degree angle for uh, Columbia, and we have a 42 degree angle for uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. Now what they're asking for, ladies and gentlemen, now it's very important that you understand that what they're asking for is the north-south distance. So this distance right here is what they're asking for uh, in this problem. And notice that that is basically an arc length is what they're asking for. So let's label it, I don't know, S maybe? Um, let's label it S. That's what they're asking for in this problem, okay, is to find that distance. Now, please recall that we have a formula um, S is equal to R times theta, the radius times the radian measure of our angle. Now listen, the radius is given, it's approximately 6,400 kilometers, uh, the radius of Earth here. Um, now theta would be the, be careful, theta would be the central angle that intercepts this arc right here. That's neither 34 degrees nor 42 degrees. We have to find the angle that intercepts this arc. And you can see here, I hope, that the angle here, this central angle, will intercept this arc here that we're, whose length we're trying to find. So in order to find the, the measure of this angle that intercepts this arc, let's subtract 34 from 42 degrees. 34 degrees from 42 degrees, and it'll leave us with this angle here. All right? And that difference there is 8. So this is 8 degrees. Now, we have to be careful here because this formula here for arc length um, is for when theta is measured in radians. And right now, theta, which is eight degrees, is not in radian mode. So what we need to do at the moment is convert eight degrees to radian mode, all right? So let's see if we remember how to do that. So let me come over here. So eight degrees 
is equal to, is equivalent to, uh, let's see if I can do this here, 8 times pi over 180 radians, okay? And so all we need to do now is just simplify. I think the GCF here would be 4 maybe. 4 goes into 8 uh, twice. 4 goes into 180, uh, let's see, 45 times, I believe. And so the radian measure of our angle theta, um, which is 8 degrees, uh, is 2 pi over 45. That's the radian measure of this central angle. So now I can go to my, my formula here and say this arc length that they're asking for is the radius 6400 kilometers, right, um, times the radian measure of my angle, which is 2 pi over 45, like that. Now when I do this calculation, um, remember they're trying to find, they want us to find distance, so our unit will be uh, kilometers, and also please notice, if I can kind of scroll, actually I don't have to scroll up, I have all the measurements here. Notice this number that they gave us for the radius has two significant digits. The same is true about these angles. So when I do this work here, I am going to round to two significant digits, and then I will not forget to write kilometers. All right, everybody, I well, let me create some more space here, if I may. And maybe get rid of just a little bit of this here to create some more board space. All right, so I'm getting S is um, approximately, let's see, 893.608577, um, yes, kilometers. Now, remember, two significant digits. So I'm going to say that the approximate north-south distance between these two cities is 890 kilometers, two significant digits. So this is the north-south distance between the two cities. Pretty cool, isn't it? This was a fun problem. We want to wrap up this lesson um, by talking about the area of a sector of a circle. Now, a sector of a circle is the portion of the interior of a circle that's intercepted by a central angle. Let's write that down. So let's go ahead and say that again. A sector of a circle is the portion of the interior of a circle. I just noticed I misspelled circle here. Let me see if I can, okay, there we go, I fixed it. The a sector of a circle is the portion of the interior of a circle, right? What I try to shade right here, intercepted by a central angle. Think of it as a piece of pi. Now, a complete circle, a complete circle, can be thought of as an angle with measure 2 pi radians. Do you remember 2 pi means 360 degrees, right? So if a central angle for a sector has measure theta radians, right, if this is theta radians, then the sector makes up the fraction theta over 2 pi. So let me write that down, right? So the sector makes up this fraction of a complete circle, right? A complete circle would be 2 pi, right? An, uh, an angle of measure uh, 2 pi radians, but theta here would be a portion or a fraction thereof, so this would be the fraction that represents um, this shaded region here, okay? Now, we do know that the area of the entire uh, circle, right, all of inside here, is pi r squared, right, everybody? We have that formula already. But if we're taking only a portion, right, only a portion, not the whole thing, then the formula here for the area of a sector would be uh, theta over 2 pi, that's the portion, right, times pi r squared. So it's a portion, a portion of the entire circle, right? A portion of the entire circle. So you can see how this simplifies. Uh, pi divides out with pi. And so what we have here is the formula for the area of a sector of a circle. Let me write it down here. The area for the uh, sector of a circle would be 1 half times r squared theta. Here, if you can box this, please, in your notes, this is, or highlight it, this is the formula for the area of a sector of a circle. Remember that theta here is uh, measured in radians, okay? So keep that in mind, okay? 
So this is the formula. R stands for the radius. Notice that the radius is being squared. This is the radius of the circle. And uh, theta is the radian measure of our angle, of our central angle. All right, let's use it to find some areas. So here, this is example five from our textbook or similar to it. Find the area of a sector of a circle having radius 15.20 feet and central angle 108.0 degrees. Hey guys, notice right away that there's four significant digits in this problem, four significant digits. All right, so let's go ahead and use our formula. The area of a sector is one half times radius squared times the radian measure of angle theta. Now we have one half, if you're punching this into the calculator eventually, you can have 0.5 here if you'd like for one half. Uh, the radius squared, so remember the radius is 15.20. We want to square that amount. And then we need the radian measure of angle theta. We don't have that. So let's go ahead and find it. So um, theta right now is 108 degrees, 108.0 degrees. And that is the same as 108 times pi over 180 radians, like that. Okay. All right, so I think the GCF here is 36 between 108 and 180. Let's see, 36. 36 goes into 108. Um, let me see. Yes, three times. And then 36 will go into 180. Um, let's see, five times, I believe. 36 times 5 is 180. Making our radian measure uh, 3 pi over 5. So 3 pi over 5 is the measure of the given angle in radian mode. Now, you might want to write an important note for yourself here. Make sure your angle when you're doing this kind of work is in radian measure. That's easy to forget. All right, let's go ahead and punch all of this information into our calculator. And remember, we're going to use four significant digits. Also, don't forget you're finding the area. Whenever you're finding area, your units are squared units. Um, so in this case, it would be squared feet. So don't forget squared feet in your final answer. All right, guys, I'm getting approximately 217.75007. Um, to four significant digits would give me 217.8 squared feet. Don't forget squared feet. All right, cool deal. This is the area of the sector of this circle. There's a lot of cool applications. Um, uh, dealing with the area of a sector, like for example, like irrigation systems, watering a lawn or, and stuff like that. And, and a lot of others and painting a wall and all these kind of cool applications. I hope you see some of them in your, in your homework. All right. This is the end of this lesson. I hope you learned a lot. Um, we co covered a couple applications for, um, the, for, for radian measure and also, uh, developed a new formula for the area of a sector of a circle. All right, catch you later.